If you ever had a tough prospect on the call that didn't want to answer any of your questions and they were really just like, get to the price, just tell me what you got, and they didn't want to follow your process, then this video is going to be for you. I just finished up a call review with a student where we had one of these prospects, they were a real estate agent, and everybody loved it. So I'm not going to tell you anymore. You're going to love this call review. We'll splice over to the video right now. There you go. Okay, fantastic. Where are you looking, man? Is it me? Ahead. It is. Okay. Where are you going? I'm in Canada. I'm in Alberta. Alberta, Canada. Okay, good. I'm in New York. New York, okay. Cool. I was just there. Okay. Yeah. All right, what are we going to test up today? Uh, just talk to the cops, see what um, I've got to get anyone. Okay, so I'm not quite curious to know what's, what's up. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's good. Uh, I, I, I'd be like, you know, you ready to dive in? Okay, awesome. Like, just a little bit brief there, but it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, what do you guys do? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so now you need to like get a good frame here, right? Beautiful. Well, dude, totally prepared to dive in to what we have going on over here and then potentially how we might be able to help if, if, if that makes sense. Um, everything we do is all customized. So at this stage, which probably would make the most sense is let me get a little bit of context on, and then, you know, let's say this is a business coaching offer, your, your business, your lead generation, your sales, and a few other items, I'll walk you through it. And then based on that, I can share with you the parts that we do that'd be relevant and useful to you specifically. I think that'd be the most time efficient way to go about it. Cool? Awesome. So let's see if he does that. Yeah, I got it. Well, basically what the best thing you do on the call, just to first figure out exactly what's going on in your business, right? Like what's working, what's not working, and then we want to go with what your goals are. Okay. And then please inquire on that, on both those things. If I tell you, we can help you with what we do here and mentorship and systems, and I'm going to have to go over those in detail. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you see how mine's a little bit better than what he did? Mine just cadence, tonality, language. I mean, just everything better, right? So not that he, what he did was bad. Like he did the right thing and he's not like, you know, being weird or anything. So it's, it's you know, it's just like a seven out of 10. Okay. Well, you did book a call with us. So what exactly prompted you to really book a call with us? Yeah. And I would just like to see a little bit more, like it's a little, it's a little stiff, you know? And so I'd like to see a little bit more, Kind of like you, you just could see how like my energy is so much more open and engaging and like fun, like you know, fun in some ways, right? Not that I'm like laughing and being weird, but it's like I'm like I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm excited for a cool conversation. I don't know where it's gonna go, but I'm excited. And so you can see he's kind of like really focused on saying the right words, right, and following a process. Now what happens is is when you focus on being scripted, it limits two things. It, 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 it makes your cadence very monotone and it limits your range of expression. So instead of having the low pitch, high pitch and going up and down and up and down, what typically happens is it's like you get this like, and this is kind of how he is. He's like very, you know, um, yes, I think what would be best for this call is like, blah, 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 blah. it's like very, you know, kind of one pitch. Right. Very like subtle. And, and most people don't do this naturally, you know. So what, this is where a lot of times like it's you do have to follow the framework. You do have to follow the syntaxes. However, you need to be naturally yourself. Like it should be you showing up on the call, the realest version of you. And I guarantee if I had, you know, a beer with Javon, we wouldn't be like, you know, this is probably not who's going to show up he's probably going to be a little looser, right? Same thing with cadence. You know, it's like when we try to focus on the exact words to say, our cadence doesn't, you know, we don't slow down. We don't speed up. It's like very like, yeah. So what I really find more expressing this call is first diving into your business. What's going on? How's it, you know, see how that's like, it's like, there's no variance, right? And the more we vary our cadence, we can command attention. Same thing with pitch. Mm. Uh, the reason for that, I'm just going on a rant at this point, but the reason for that is, I, I forget where I read this, but back in, uh, you know, tribal, you know, when we were on the savannah for 2 million years out of our human species existence, uh, the, the leaders of the tribe typically had the highest variance of cadence, or the they would, var like, variance of cadence and variance of expression and pitch. Right. Like they would they were freely expressing themselves. Right. Because they were like the top status of the tribe. Whereas if you felt like you were low status, 
you wanted to kind of not express yourself because if you stick out like a sore thumb, you get kicked out of the tribe. Now, whether that's true or not, exactly, I don't know. I'm not a you know archaeologist, but what I will say is definitely those two things make a difference in sales culture. Um, well, I mean, I'm a real estate and every, every real estate has the same, we see the challenges, this is a big one, um, as well as business generation. Uh, so of course, you know, being a, you know, always learning in the business and trying to up my game also, uh, trying to get bigger and bigger and educate as well, right? So one of the things that I like to do is I like to, uh, see who's in the game and what they are doing and how that can contribute to help my game, right? Just by like going to a bookstore, you see good books, you get to pick up good books and you're reading and educating yourself, right? So not necessarily going to look at something specific, um, but more so like if something aligns in terms of value system and there's definitely a collaboration approach here, then absolutely. But is, is it my desperate to, for something specific here or there? That's, that's not the case. Okay. Gotcha. No problem. So I guess like probably our best place to start is what would you say is like the biggest um, challenge in your business or like, or like what's not working at the level you truly feel like it could be or that it should. Okay. You want to say with that cadence too. Challenge. See what I mean? Like even though I'm doing this whole hand motion thing here. So it's like good, you know, okay. So what's the biggest challenge in your business? We don't want to say that, right? You see how I said because the first thing we want to do in the call is, you know, he say he gets on, he's real brief, but he's not like, you can't get frustrated with this guy. He's just being this guy. He's direct to the point, brief. I don't have any pain. Okay, great. You don't, you know, even though you're on a call about scaling your business, you do, but you don't. So the first thing we need to identify is what is the gap? You know, right. There's seven beliefs the prospect needs to have to buy. There's pain, doubt, cost, desire, money, support, trust. We need to essentially identify what is the, the pain because all the other six beliefs are predicated on first finding the pain. The pain can either be a problem or an unfulfilled desire. It can be like, I'm screwed. I'm not going to be able to, you know, um, run my business if I can't figure things out in the next three months or like my wife's pissed at me because I'm not bringing them, you know, bringing up money home. Or it could be like, yeah, I mean, things are okay, but I'm at 15K a month. I want to get to 50. So which which one of those two is this guy? You guys put it in the chat. Trent, what, what which one is it? Uh, pain or, or uh, problem or unfulfilled desire? Problem. <laughs> no, it's unfulfilled desire. <laughs> but good, good try, man. Good try. Uh, so it's, it's unfulfilled desire because... Here he is. It's unfulfilled desire because you literally just say, well, like there's nothing I'm really looking for. There's, no, there's nothing I'm really like trying to find or desperately, he's a desperately need. Yeah. He's probably at 10K a month trying to get to 50K a month. He doesn't need to get to 50K a month to put food on the table. But it's an unfulfilled desire. It's the same way a bodybuilder. Like if they want to go from 10% body fat to 6% body fat, that's, that's not a problem. That's an unfulfilled desire. Does that make sense? But it's still, that classifies under the pain belief. Hopefully makes sense. Hey Cole, I just got here. I just signed up. I know you're late. You're late, dude. <laughs> you're late, man. You yeah. got to, Tyler's going to, uh, she's going to beat you up. Overall landscape, what's the overall landscape? What you have on? Sure, sure. So, okay, I missed your question. There, one second. Um, but is, is it my desperate for something specific here or there? That's that's not the case. Okay, so what, why don't you give me overall landscape of your business? Again? What's what's uh? Yeah, so so you know you're just not again like what you needed to do here, man. I'm just gonna repeat myself. Is like the first thing you need to find is like why are we here? And we are here because we're, we're to help them get from where they are now to where they want to be. We're gonna, we need to find out what the gap is. That's the first thing. The gap is synonymous with pain, right? Pain is the first of the seven beliefs. Yeah. There's two types of pain. There's an unfulfilled desire and there's a problem. Problem is like I have back pain. Unfulfilled desire is I want to, you know, work on, like I just went to a neck therapist earlier because I have like a minor degeneration in my C1C2. Uh, it's not painful at all, but I don't want it to be painful in 20 years. That's more of an unfulfilled design, right? It's like more prevention, longevity. Pain is like, if I was like, man, I'm really dealing with some chronic pain in my back or my neck. See what I mean? Um, if you have a headache, that's a pain, right? You go to, you go get the Advil or sorry, a problem. You go get the Advil to alleviate the problem. If your business is going to shut down in three months, if you don't do anything, that's a problem. 
if your wife's pissed at you because you're making 5K a month and you need to make 10K a month just to pay the bills or put some in savings and take care of the family, that's a problem. You see the difference? Problem, unfulfilled desire. This guy's an unfulfilled desire guy. Landscaping your business, we're not going to get a lot there. Okay, we're not going to get a lot. So we need to ask, what would you say is, I guess, like the biggest challenge in your business? Or like, what's not working at level it truly could be that it should? Okay. So now, who knows what we're going to do when we ask that question, but we got to ask it. We got to figure out why is he here? You did ask why is he here? And he just told you like, well, I'm here because I just want to see if like there's alignment, if you guys are innovating, if you guys are doing anything interesting, I don't desperately need anything, but who knows where this could go? So you're kind of like, well, what the hell, dude? But you can't get mad. A black belt level salesperson is like, oh, okay, I eat this shit for breakfast. Okay. But again, we got, okay, it's like, why are we here? Didn't do anything. We need to, we need to find the problem, biggest challenge. And overall, thanks for what you have on. Sure, sure. So, um, starting the business about two and a half years ago, uh, I was lucky because it was COVID. And actually, for us here, our market absolutely blew up. Uh, so, I just kind of like on my place. Um, so, you know, I had a lot of success in the last couple of years. I got an expanded team. Now it's about three people. Um, but now that the market's kind of come down and, and slightly uh, going back to normal, which is the new normal, um, you know, you start closing a lot of gaps in, in business and, and that. I mean, uh, where before, you know, you just kind of live, exist, and, and leads come in or referrals come in and business comes in because the market's falling. Um, and now it's a little bit different. Now it's, I think you got to go and chase the business and then have the systems, the proper systems fall out and the proper systems to actually retain this business and then, um, you know, sort of very, very well. So it's just a different landscape, it's a different world, I think, from from where when I came into business to what it is now. Maybe some of them in business for 10 years, and like, oh, I remember this is the same thing where, um, you know, dealing with five years back, I know I was over there. So it's just a different world. Okay. Okay. So, dude, you're not taking notes. First of all, are you taking notes? No, I stopped taking notes. You stopped. I, notes. Um, I, I was taking notes in the beginning, and it was becoming like a distraction for me. Like I was just like, okay, boom, boom, boom writing down. Okay, boom, boom. So I got used to doing it without notes, and it's been fine since I've been doing that. Right, but dude, if you want to be like next level best, I guarantee you got to take notes. The, the, the problem is, dude, you probably don't know how to take notes, which is fine. Nobody does know. So here's, here's what we're going to do. And, and you know what? This is my old school training from way back in the day. Uh, you know, candidly, man, I look at this. Uh, I don't even know if the new training goes over it like I used to, which I'm, I have it on my to-do list to look at. But look at this. Okay. So up here, I have the key points I want to cover, right? Which is the seven I basically just write out the syntax. So right here, I write out the syntax. And then that way, I kind of know where I'm at and where I need to go. I put the guy's name here. I put, see, ideal client, like who he's going after, his offer, his price point. So for you, you want to put, like, what type of, does he want buyers or does he want listings? Okay, he wants buyers. Out of what type, are you trying to sell things in the median price range or like high end luxury? Like what is your target market and what specific areas? Oh, okay, great. Cool. And then what is your commission? Is it 5% in that area? Okay. So are you typically doing two and a half, two and a half split from the buyer and the seller agent? Okay, great. And then what's your split with the broker, if any? Okay. You're 80, 20. Okay, great. So if you do a home that's 400,000 and you get two and a half percent, okay, let's do the math on that right now. Okay. Let's just, what, what is it? 400,000. times 0.25%. Okay, you're gonna make 10 grand. You got an 80-20 split with the broker. Okay, so the broker is gonna get 20% of that. So you're making 8,000 on a $400,000 home, which is basically what your target is. Okay, got it, right? I'm gonna put all that up here. Now, hopefully you do that on this call because I need to know how much he makes per sale. I also need to know commission splits. I need to know who he's going after. It makes sense. Here, I just write down some random notes. Okay, that just helps me kind of process things. Here, I in this column here, I write down the reasons why he wants to do it now, and potentially any language that I need to bring up at the end of the call. Here, I write down everything I'm going to do in my pre-pitch. Here, I write down everything I'm going to say in my pitch. You know, obviously, you kind of have a standard pitch, but like you want to incorporate his language back in and use examples from what he told you, okay? So like, you can see here, I wrote, wife is going to kill me if I don't figure this out by January 1st, okay? So I'm just made this up. But like, that's something you might wanna bring up at the end of the sales call. You see what I mean? 
And then you're kind of knocking off the syntax here to make sure you cover everything you need to cover, even if you don't go totally in order. So do you see how if you did this with the system I'm saying here and you do this correctly, it would really, really help you on your calls? Yeah, like, I mean, I've been doing that in my head. So that's kind of what's changed is like using their language and like thinking things like breadbasket, like AIM says. Yeah, like, but I'm telling you right now, dude, yeah. if like somebody goes on a five minute rant, for instance, and they give you a ton of different stuff, yeah. like they might give you the reason why they might give you three points you want to talk about in your pre-pitch. And they might give you a phrase you want to use in your pillar one of your pitch and a phrase you want to use in pillar three. I don't know about you unless you have like a photographic memory, but like most of us can't remember every single one of those things. Yeah, and I agree with you. I'm not like disagreeing with you at all. What I'm saying is like, that's how I've been doing it because my problem is with I, with me like taking the notes, it's hard for me to, like I break eye contact if I do that. So my struggle has been like how to look at my notes and <laughs> like, like, and yeah. actually look at my notes and like, okay, I got to say, I need to say this. I need to bring this up. I need to bring it up. Well, you and know what you can also do like, then? Engagement yeah. with them. So what I do is I just use the Google Doc. Now, if it's Zoom, I just say, hey, dude, do you care if I share a screen and just take some notes? Oh. Yeah. And then what I'll do is I'll just write out everything. And then if, and if I have stuff, stuff I want to say in the transition, so this would be like my discovery notes, right? And so if I have stuff I want to say in the transition, I'll just put it here. And then if I have stuff I want to pick, say in the pitch, I'll just make a space and I'll put it here. And then usually like you, you just write out language that you know you want to use later in terms of the cost. So yeah, you could do that. And then you can just have the syntax on your screen or, you know, if you're going to share your screen, maybe not just put a sticky note or something, have your syntax on your computer and then you can, and then you can knock it off there. That way, that's what I, actually I do now. Uh, and I, and I take the notes exactly like this. So I, I don't make it so like he has to know what, like some of this stuff, he's not going to know what the hell this is. I mean, I wouldn't say use systems a lot in your pitch. Right. But like, I would say I put your systems in all caps. Okay. Why is that? Because the dude said systems five times on the call. So systems is a key word for him in my pitch. I'm going to be like, this is a system. This is not some coaching program where you get again and it's going to be a rah, 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 rah. We're giving you a system, a system to be able to find the right buyers and sellers in your area, the system to be able to blank, the system to be able to recruit people who can work leads for you. So you're only closing the best listings, a lot of the, right? System, system. So that's just an example. And then also like, as he was saying all that stuff, see, see what he mentioned here that I wrote down. Uh, he was, in, he got into it a few years ago. So I want to know what was he doing before? What was the catalyst that, that wanted him to start real estate? Because there could be some gold there, right? Because like the reason why he got into real estate in the first place is probably the same reason he wants to continue to grow his business. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Next thing is, he says the market calms down. Uh, you know, things are really, really good. Things are exploding and the market calmed down. So now what I want to know is I want to know, okay, what did he do in 2020 GCI? What did he do in 2021? And what has he done so far this year? Because I guarantee he's made way less this year. Right? So what, what I could ask is, gotcha. So what did you do GCI last year, 2021? Oh, I did three in the grand. Dude, congratulations. That's phenomenal. What about this year? Uh, you know, dude, we're only on pace for like 120. Dang. So like, so like you're, you're about 60, 65% less this year in income. Um, can, can I ask you a personal question? Has that had an impact on you financially? In, in what way though? You see what I mean? You see how I'm gonna get compare, contrast, compare, contrast? Uh, and then we'll get into some lead generation stuff here. So just a few things there um, in terms of your note taking, it'll really help, dude. I really, really encourage you to, maybe you're a Google bug tonight, okay? And I'm telling you, my closers love doing this, love it. Yeah, I'll have um, to play around with it and figure out how to make it work for me. It sounds like obviously it'll help. Yeah. But the other thing is too, man, is like, if you, with the eye contact, I get what you're saying. Just be like, dude, do you care if I just take notes real fast? I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. Okay, perfect. And then, I mean, dude, honestly, I'll tell you this, like when I'm on calls and people take notes, handwritten notes, it really makes me feel like they're serious and they're listening to me. So I think that you think, oh man, I'm not connecting with the person if I'm not taking notes, but I think it's actually quite opposite. You know, like one of my friends, Hormozy, he, one of the things he said about Grant Cardone when he did the one-on-one coaching session with Grant Cardone, he's like, dude, he took, he took notes the entire time. He showed up, pen and pad, took notes. That's like one of the first things he said. 
because it shows a level of seriousness. And so I, I, I just would really encourage you, man, the best people take notes. And I'm really passionate about this because I like one of the big breakthroughs I had was going through kind of what you were doing, not taking notes to really getting a good note taking system down. And that's when I got airtight, amazingly good. Cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, I agree. I, I took notes in the beginning. It was well, and then it kind of became an issue. So I stopped doing it, but yeah, I'll just figure out how to implement it back into what I do now. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, well, just kind of listening to the things I was just saying, where when, when, when the market's very, very hot, um, you can just exist by just being there, right? Uh, where now, obviously, the market has gone down. Um, you know, you, you got to go and chase this. You got to go get the business. You got to go nurture the business. Yeah, there are systems that I just don't have. Okay, so like, what are your systems now? What do they look like? My systems, all my systems. Um, for the generation or what specific period? Yeah, so, so you see, you know, he's, he's kind of confused, right? So you kind of, you kind of, you kind of getting a little bit late, but uh, what I was saying is you should have started off with what, okay, because you asked, okay, hey, what could we potentially help you with? He kind of went on a whole spiel, or I think he said like, oh yeah, I just want to know what you do. Paraphrasing, but that, you know, you're, and I'm sure you're like, great. You know, no, nobody really wants that response, but it's fine. And then, so you got to set a frame. And then I think you said something along the lines of like, gotcha, so like, what's the biggest thing you're trying to get out of this car? Like, why did you book the call in the first place? Or I, I don't know, you said something like that. And, uh, he kind of said like, well, I don't really, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to find something of value. I like things and people who are innovating, but I don't desperately need it. Right. And, you know, dude, like you just got to get good with this type of guy because these are your good clients who can buy, but agents, they're just, they're just tough. But dude, I'm telling you, man, my, I, I cut my teeth on selling agents. So if you could do this, that then you'll move into it. Like if you ever move into something else, You'll be like, when I started selling coaches, I was like, this is the easiest thing I've ever done because I sold agents uh, and they're much tougher. Insurance agents also tough. Real estate's the hardest though. Like they're one of the harder ones because they just think they just have a big ego and think they're just so smart and so rich and, oh, I get sold all the time. Just tell me what you got. So yeah, like what you should have done is, gosh, dude, no problem. So like, I guess what like I'm really wondering is like, what would you say is like the biggest challenge in, in, in the business or like, or like what, what's not working at least at the level you truly feel like it could be that it should. And you would have phrased it like that too. Not like, yeah, man. So what's your biggest challenge? Like what's not working? Don't say it like that. No, Cause he would say nothing's not working. Right. But if you say it, like I said it with the cadence and the tonality, and then you saw like, you know, or like what's not working level truly could be that it should. Right. I, 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 he's going to give you something. Here's what I got to say, just because like I went to a, I was at a brand, we did the same call over like very similar where I was always doing that. I was always saying like, you know, what's your biggest challenge and doing it the way you were saying. And, you know, Brian gave me a paradigm shift of like using the funnel, like, you know, start from here. Like what's your, what's the landscape of your business right now? Because we're going to chunk down into that. So it's a little conflicting just hearing it from you, but like I'm getting pulled both ways. So I'm like, which one do I use? Cause I was. Well, I understand that can be frustrating. You know what I mean? That's so here, here, here's the thing. I would not ask what's the landscape of your business because that doesn't get you anywhere, dude. Like the whole call, what is the call about? The well, call is about, about it's about the problem, right? It's about where they're now versus where they want to be and seeing if you can position the offer between them. So the entire call is about that. There's seven beliefs they need to have the buy. There's pain, doubt, cost, desire, money, support, trust. Six of them are all predicated on number one, right? Because pain is the problem. Doubt is why they can't fix the problem. Cost is what's going to happen if they don't fix the problem. Desire is the payoff they get if they fix the problem. Money is their resources and willingness to fix the problem. Support is does their wife, spouse, business partners, and team, whoever, support them in fixing the problem. And trust is do they believe your methodology is the fastest, best, most effective way to fix the problem. So you see how you cannot knock off any of the other seven beliefs until you, you do the first one, you knock down the first domino, which is the problem. So yeah. look, you could start, like, here's the thing. It doesn't matter if you say what's the land, like, but the thing was, when you asked that question, I don't know if you were here when we reviewed it, he kind of like, didn't, it, you didn't get a lot of from it, right? He's like, well, you know, I have systems for this, I have systems for that, I have systems for that. And you're kind of like, you, you feel like you don't have your footing with this guy. Mm -hmm. That's why I would have went with the challenge. Yeah. Okay? And the key is, is if, the, the big, big thing is, man, is if you if you get these weird, well, I don't have any challenges right now, it's probably your tonality and the way you ask that. And if you do get that, 
then what you want to say is gotcha. So like, let me put it this way. Like ultimately what's the goal? Like, I, I don't know your revenue now, but like in a perfect world, where would you want your GCI to be in terms of monthly commissions on average consistently each month, month after month? Okay, great. Where does that compare to where you're at right now? Like what'd you do last month specifically? Okay. So I guess the real question I'm asking is like, what do you feel like you need to be able to get there? Is it just better lead generation systems for or lead generation system uh, for your team? Or, or what do you think that is? So I'm just going to ask it a different way. Mm-hmm. But he's not going to, he's going to get what I'm trying to say. Now, I do know about his language and also working, it is leads. It's always leads with these guys. So like, you know, don't get too frustrated if you don't get it too much, because then what we're going to do is we're going to get into this lead generation system and then we're going to chunk down. Okay, which I'll cover next. I want to go through a little bit more of your call, but we'll cover next. Cool. Do you have questions on that? No, I'm good with that. Let's keep, let's keep going. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, Joe. Oh, that's a very long conversation. That's a very long conversation. Yeah. I mean, do you try to explain to me like about your business? Uh, and see if you can help anyway. Yeah, you know, that's funny. But is there something specific that you want to hear? Or, you no, know, I want to know more about how, how you did the operations. Like, what's specific that you're doing in your business right now that wasn't working? I was working before. We can talk about. That's not working right now. Like, talking about what's specific with us. So I want to. No, it's nothing's breaking down. It's not getting the same amount of business at all. Anyway. Again, it's, it's it's when I buy the business. You know, you're, you're you're closing fifty deals a year, no problem. Um, or now it's a little bit different. Now I'm not right. There you go. So things are are different. Traction different. Just for gaming plan, getting business through the door is different. That's the number one problem right there. The market has shifted, and to get the same amount of business through the door, I must be doing something different. And so, so what were the, the transactions last year? So let's talk about numbers here. What was your GCI last year, and how many transactions did you close last year? Uh, I closed 53 transactions last year. It was just yeah, and I would have there. So like again, how you start the call, a lot of times how you're going to end the call. So like you got to be aware. Like just just one quick thing is I want to make sure when I was when I was newer in my career and I was selling people like this, I would be like, "You're a dumbass." You can't follow my process. Like, you're stupid. Honestly, I don't even know why I'm talking. Like, I would kind of just write them off. Oh, like, as we're a prospect with a big ego, wouldn't follow the process, not close, we'll see. As I got better, I kind of realized, like, oh, no, I can never close with you. And so one quick thing here is, like, don't be, like, he'll change when you change, right? And if you start to do this a little bit better, you'll open this guy up. And you just got to know very quickly, he's super direct. So you got to be super direct. You know, you got to, he's got to feel like this call is meaningful. And every question that you're asking makes perfect sense. Right. So that's, that's number one. Number two, after this whole like awkwardness you just had there, I would have said, oh, dude, I totally apologize. I, I think I misheard something. I was, I was, I was a little confused. That's my bad. So obviously the thing is lead generation. How are you currently generating leads right now? Because you need to take responsibility for the conversation because, dude, you're the king of the conversation, man. This is your world. You see what I mean? Yeah, no, you totally get it. You totally understand what I'm going through here. <laughs> yeah. Under 400. I've already surpassed that this year. But, I mean, from, for the last two months, it, it, it's, not, it's like completely off the edge, completely different market. From the first like, five months, six months of the year to now, it's different. Hey, what way? Um, I was closing five, six transactions a month. Now, in the last three months, I probably closed five transactions. Can you repeat that one more time? I don't want to say you said you were closing five transactions a month. Now, the last two months, you closed five. Oh. Last three months, you closed five. Okay, so you, you see five. what I'm saying? It, 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 it's like two and a half. Okay, yeah, two and a half, three months, you closed five. Right before, two months ago, probably four months ago, right? You were closing five consistently. Five, six, yeah. And it was that way since last year? Yes. Okay, good. Got it. Now I understand what more I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. And so for the last few months, it's been one or two transactions. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, like, I mean, again, it's, it's difficult maybe because you're not in my marketplace, but it is a huge shift. It's an alarming shift. Oh, no, um, I understand. I understand. Um, it's been happening. It's, 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 um, so I definitely see what's going on. Yeah, they love to do that because. Oh yeah, like you might not understand, but yeah, you know, so you don't want you don't want to be put in the you don't understand, them. right? Like that. That's that's so. Fair. How are you getting transactions? Let's talk about that system. How are you getting transactions? Mine, mine, mine. So let me let me give you a better system, because uh, like let me let me tell you how I would have done this. Okay. So first of all, we're gonna we're gonna recap some of the stuff we said. You have a little bit of rapport, all right? Cool. And and you can say, hey, what could we potentially help with? I know you did that, Brian. Probably touching that. That's fine. He just says, I want to know what you do, right? You're like, okay, great. Then you do the frame, the call. How would a frame is a little bit different than how you did. You did a great job with your frame, but to make it a little bit better, what I would say is, gotcha, new problem. Um, dude, so I am more than prepared to share with you a little bit what we got going on over here, if it obviously makes sense for you. Um, but everything we do is all customized. So I think at this stage, what's probably going to make the most sense is let me understand essentially your market, how you're generating these right now, what's going on with your team, and ultimately the other things that you want to focus on and challenges you're having. And then 
based on that, I can share with you what's going to be most relevant and useful for you specifically. Is that cool? All right, perfect. And then I forget the next question you asked, but it's probably fine. But what you're really looking for right after that frame is, is the gap or the change. And so you asked that one question, you didn't really get what you wanted. I would have definitely went, went with the what's the biggest challenge question. So then after what's the biggest challenge, he kind of talks about the slowdown, right? So, and, and dude, 95% of the time, it's always leads with these guys. So you kind of already know. Okay. So once you identify the problem, what's the next step? We want to see what they're currently trying to do to fix the problem. So, okay, dude, give me some bullets here. How are you currently trying to generate leads right now? Okay. He's going to sit there and tell you 900 things. Postcards, mailers, Facebook ads, this, that, networking, sphere of influence and events. Okay. You do not fall into the trap of being like, well, how is the mailers working for you? How is the ads? Are you happy with those? He's going to be like, yeah, they're good. I just need more leads. So you, you, you can't like do much there to, you know, he's going to list out all this stuff. And then you're going to say, okay, great. That's a lot. So let's kind of break down how that's working for you right now. How many uh, appointments did you have with new potential clients? You know, let's just, if it's, if it's August 19th, I'm going to say so far this month. And then I'm going to say, okay, what about in July? Exactly. What about in July? Exactly. Okay. And then I might go another month back, depending on the data I get. So I said, okay, and we're only going to go one more month, month back. What about June? How many total appointments? Okay, gotcha. Dude. So you've had 60 appointments in the past two and a half months, yeah? Gotcha. Out of those, how many were actually qualified, uh, the type of people that you could help? And actually, a little bit better way to do this is you get the 60 appointments, and then you say, okay, dude, before I go further with this, real quickly, can you help me understand First of all, like, who is your perfect client? Like, do you want to work with buyers and sellers? And there, is there a specific price range? Walk me through that. Okay. So buyers and sellers, and then we want to get the price range. And when he says, oh, 500, I want to know, is that below or above the BD in your area? Okay, gotcha. So you're going a little more higher luxury. Is there a specific reason for that? Oh, okay, great. Cool. And then what's the commissions in your area? 5%. Okay, gotcha. You guys do even commissions, two and a half, two and a half, buyer, seller, agent. Okay, perfect. So you want listings particularly, and you guys are getting two and a half percent. And ideally, they're around an average of 500. Yes. Cool. And then what's your split with the broker? Right? Okay, great. So when we give you a 500K listing, or well, we did the 400K, right? We give you a 400K listing, um, five, you know, uh, two and a half percent, 10K, or what was it, 8K, 10K? 10K, you're giving 80, 20% to the broker, so you're taking no needs. Awesome, cool. All right, perfect. And then, so let's go back to the 60 appointments. You had 60 appointments in the last uh, 75 days, approximately. You mentioned you want people who are sellers and people who are in that uh, 400K medium income range or more. Yeah. Out of those 60, how many fit the ICP that you just described? That's going to pull that number arbitrarily really low. You see what I did there? Because I got him to tell me the perfect person that he wanted. And I know he's not the my person. Because if I would ask, well, how many out of the 60 are qualified? Who knows what will tell me there? I'm sure there's probably some room for improvement. But then when I anchor it with like this really good client, and then I ask, um, he's going to be like, dude, five, five. Why do you think that is? You know, do you feel like that's the marketing or do you feel like, like, what do you think is going on right now that's causing you? I don't know. That's why I'm on the call. Okay, cool. I got some thoughts for you on that, but we'll circle back to that in a second. Right? So we do that. Then what we do is, okay, great. So, at, okay, out of the 60 then, how many did you close, right? Whatever, four, right? Or, you know, he's like, oh, some have a close. Okay, gotcha. Well, how many actually listed their thing with you? 
Oh, dude, out of all the ones that were qualified, every single one. Gotcha. So when we get you in front of a qualified person, you close them no problem. The biggest thing it seems like is number one, volume, and number two, quality. Okay. So then we're going to say, okay, great. Now, in the past 75 days, how many did, did you have close? He's going to say, oh, I made four close. Gotcha. What was the total GCI out of that? Okay, cool. And then what was net? Like, obviously, you're doing marketing, you got a team, all that stuff. What was net take home for you out of those five transactions? Proximate. Okay, beautiful. And then we go GCI this year so far compared to last year. And then what we can do, we create a gap. Oh, has that had an impact on you financially? Oh, in what way? Okay, then what we're gonna do, now we've got, you see how we have the problem now? It's like, bam, we got this freaking thing. Then we're gonna say, okay, gotcha. So obviously you've had a pretty big downturn from last year into this year. And uh, particularly the last couple of months hasn't been good. I mean, how long has this downturn been going on for like how long have you been feeling this for right how long then we say okay great so what have you tried in the past to be able to fix this if anything like in the past two and a half months have you tried have you been out there looking or trying for other solutions to get your lead flow up okay what have you looked into or slash tried right now we're going to get this now what do you sell by the way me or him? Yeah, yeah. Like, what's the program you're going to sell? Oh, so it's basically mentorship, coaching, um, a whole system to get leads and build a business in real okay. estate. What is, what is the system? Is it like Facebook ads based or like, what is it? The system is really the, um, it's a business operating system for your whole business. So you're going to get the way to get leads that are going to come to you. You're going to get a way to convert them and you're going to get a way to build a business so you can scale it, like ad agents, you know, ad Pieces. Beautiful. Love it. Love it. How do you teach them how to get leads though? Um, we basically do it with the mentorship. So the the mentor that they would get will give them the ads that work best for who they want to target. For Facebook or what? Yeah, everything. Facebook, it could be direct mail. It's just the message is more important than the media. So, but the obviously the the media determines which which person we're gonna approach. Yeah. I'm I'm assuming though 80% of the clients probably pick one channel, like Facebook ads or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. Mostly. Yeah. It's Facebook online. Okay. Yeah. The, the reason I'm asking is like, dude, I, I bet these people really want to know, well, how are you going to generate, tell, teach me how to generate leads? And if you say, look, dude, what you should say the whole reframe of like, look, like the biggest reason people screw up with their marketing is not necessarily the channel. It's because of the messaging behind the channel. And so what we teach you how to do is nail down the messaging. So that really, instead of focusing on, oh, what channel should I do? You can be omni-channel. And every yeah. channel works because you're saying the right thing. Okay. You should say that, but dude, they're still going to want to know what channel it is. I think a lot of the times. So yeah. then you could say something like, generally, it's going to be Facebook. Like what I could really see you doing is Facebook with a combination of Google, typically. And in doing so, you're going to blank, 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 blank. However, the reason I was trying to ask you that question is because, you know, you, how long, what else have you tried to be able to fix this, if anything? Have you been out there looking for some other solutions? Because whatever you recommend, you want to make sure, like, you know what his experience was trying them in the past. Because if you do say Facebook, if he's tried Facebook, he might think, oh, Facebook doesn't work for me. Like, it's like, oh, tried that, doesn't work. Okay, done. So you just want to know that on the front end so that you can essentially get him out of that. And it's like, okay, what, happened? what do you do with the Facebook? Explain to me the campaign. Okay, great. Um, what were you saying in your end? Okay, great. Gotcha. Uh, I have some thoughts. I got some thoughts for you on that. I'll circle back to that in a second. Then later in the call, you could say, Hey, so you know how earlier on the call you mentioned that your Facebook ads weren't working. And you, when you tried that, it didn't work. Dude, the biggest thing that we see with all the agents we work with is the messaging. And then you go through that whole spiel. So it's not the channel, it's the messaging. And it's like, dude, I can tell you that to be true for a fact because I know we have agents who are around your area or in similar areas who had tried Facebook before. And when we started tweaking their messaging, not only did we get Facebook to work, but now we have direct mail working. Now we have this working. Now we have this working. 
You see what I mean? So this is why you want to get these this solution questions, right? So we want to get this AMO a little bit up front before, right? So we go through that. How long has this been going on? And then we go, what have you what have you tried in the past to be able to fix this if it Okay. Uh, now, normally in situations like this, I would teach you after that to go for the why now question or what's going to happen if nothing changes. With this guy, I would not do it. This guy's a guy where like, he's a high performer. He wants business. He wants to scale. If it makes sense, he'll buy. You know, if he sees dollar signs, makes sense, buy, right? So I wouldn't do the whole like, you know, why is this some important to you to grow your business, man. Like, I wouldn't do that with this guy. You're just going to run into some issues. Hopefully, maybe you can, he'll say something that you can kind of grab on and then dig into it right there. And then now, after we've done this, we've really gone through the entire current situation. We're going to say, okay, gotcha. So ultimately, I would even say like, how, you know, we have this anchored here, 60 appointments. Then I would go on to say, I say, gotcha, man. Well, how many appointments would you like to see yourself getting a day or your team getting a day each day predictably throughout the entire month? Gotcha. Okay, great. And then so based on that, if you had that many appointments, how many do you think over time with your pipeline building like that, you'd be closing on a consistent basis per month? Gotcha. Okay. And if that is the, and, and then so, you know, based on your current average sale, you know, you're, you're right now you're at about, 5,000 commission to sale, you'd be doing $50,000 a month. But dude, if we can get you up to that target that you want, you'd be doing $80,000. Cool? Gotcha. Okay, awesome. And then I'd say the whole non-monetary goals question. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say that? Like what's your ultimate goal outside of- No, so I, I, would, I would hit the income goal with this guy. And then what I would do is then after that, I would say, gotcha. Okay, so we know the income goal. Uh, my question for you is, uh, or I'd say, we know the income goal now, dude, can I ask you a personal question? And the reason why I'm asking this is, uh, I don't know your offer owner's name, but I'll just use you. Um, what's really important to Devon is not just helping you build a real estate business that's building you wealth, but also one that's empowering you to live a lifestyle that you want to live. So when you think about that, what is that for you? What are the non-monetary goals you want your, your business to allow you to achieve? You know, and so because he, you might get some good stuff, especially with this guy. That's a good one where you might actually get something. with him. Yeah, I did actually get a little bit of that, which is like surprising because I was trying the whole time to like, open them up and crack them open. So I didn't use it the same way, but I know exactly what you mean. That's actually what you teach in the, in the um, programs, too. So yeah. that's yeah. The way better to phrase it than how I yeah. did it anyway. Yeah. So you hit that. And then, uh, yeah, you do want to ask, okay, and what's your long-term vision for your real estate business? Where would you want to see it? You want to ask that one, which you probably did, especially because he'll probably talk about team. He'll probably talk about like having a business and him not selling all the time, blah, 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 blah. That way in your last pillar, when you talk about the team, you can you can paint that picture for him and you can be like, hey, you know, earlier when you said you wanted a team, you wanted this, you wanted this, you wanted this. Well, like in this part of the program, we help you, you know, essentially everything to create a business, not a job. Because that's what these guys want is they they don't want to be a full-time salesperson. They eventually want to be a business owner where they have a marketing system and somebody in charge of the marketing. They have their, their agents and they have a system that produces some cash flow independent of their time. That's what we help our agents do, you know. So you, you kind of want to pull one of those things on. So really, that, that that's it uh, for your discovery. I just think, I think, you know. I think you know this stuff. You're obviously, you know, you're good. This guy was a little bit tough. I think he threw you off a little bit. And, and I think what, what would have really helped you is if you just were very direct and specific with your questions and just bam, ran down this syntax. It's like, okay, challenge. How are you currently trying to fix challenge? Let's see how that's working for you. Numbers, 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 numbers. Okay, bam, bam, bam. And dude, when you're doing this with agents, the key thing is, especially when you run through perfect, you know, this perfect client thing, buyers or sellers, median income. Okay, are you 5% or are you guys 6% in your area? Gotcha. So you're two and a half. Are you guys doing an even split? Gotcha. What's your split with the broker? Okay, great. Great. So you're making this. He'll start to be like, fuck, is this guy an agent? You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah exactly. And it's very key. That's very, very key. I used to get asked that all the time when I sold agents. It is key to selling these guys. 
Uh, cause they're gonna be like, this guy gets it. You know, if you were buying a sales training program, would you want to buy it from granted? It wouldn't make any sense because the salesperson is obviously, you know, but like, if you were, uh, like, you know, imagine if you're selling, uh, women, how to optimize their hormones when they get over 40, right. Do you want to buy from a man? It's like, they don't get it. Like they don't understand any of this stuff. It doesn't mean a man, man could do it. He would just have to be really knowledgeable and be able to demonstrate their knowledge. Right. So it's like people want to buy from uh, people who have industry acumen. That's what we call it. They get it. You see what I mean? So let's do that for your discovery. Let's kind of see how this ends. Are you based on where you want to go? One day answer, not right? Uh, no, I think it would work. It definitely would work. And probably maybe seven, something like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What makes it seven for you? I just still don't fully really understand. I understand that there's knowledge in here. They're going to be using both. Of you know, there's definitely going to be, you know, the deliverables, all, you know, whether it's listening to the all that good stuff is already there. And then scaling up the system would be, be nice. Uh, I've never been like on a call or an answer for anything like that. I understand the value system. Well, what is really being taught, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's all. Okay. Um, you know, or an answer for anything like that. I understand the value system. What is really being taught, right? Yeah. So that, that is an interesting man because. Like, you know how I said he's going to want to know what the channel is? Like, I think he's like, he gets that, okay, we're going to help coach you. We're going to help you with your messaging. We're going to help you with this. But like, there needs to, there, like what you explained to me a moment ago, lacked this concreteness, you know? And their logical brain needs that. Emotional brain, he wants to do it. Logical brain is like, I need a reason. Like, I need like, you know how it is. It's like, oh, that's why I made a mistake before. And I just, if I just do this one thing, oh, it's going to work now, right? Oh, that's why I haven't lost weight before. I wasn't in ketosis and I was eating carbohydrates. So if I just get in ketosis, then I'm going to be able to lose weight. It was just that one thing. You see what I mean? You do, you, you kind of need to position it like that. And the messaging is one thing, but it does lack a little concreteness because they're they're kind of like, all right, well, like, what are you going to do with my messaging, right? So, so you know, you need to be able to explain. That's why I was asking about the channel. It's funny that I went right to this point because th this is a symptom of when you pitched him not having that concreteness of what's going to be different. Remember, I say the pitch is the simultaneous explanation of why everything they tried in the past has failed and why this is going to be different, right? So like by the nature of you pitching, he needs to understand, oh, that's why I feel in the past. And oh, okay, this is why it's going to be different. Because that ticks the logical. Brain. Does that make sense? And it gives the emotional brain permission to move forward. You see yeah, it makes mean? sense. Oh, yeah. And it's, he just didn't get that from my pitch. So that was the whole thing right there. He has to get that from my pitch. Yeah. There you go, man. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's all. Okay. You know, we have to explore the whole. I'm just curious what this entails in terms of investing. Yeah, so how we break that down pretty little is free marketing bonus every week. So like I said, you with Craig, Monday's going well. So Monday is like an open mastermind call. So this is like to help you visualize this on Zoom. Okay. Back Monday is where you can ask the questions you want, like listen to other questions and get information. Right. Thursday is a role play clinic. So that's where you and your team can practice those dialogues and practice those scripts that are going to help you guys convert. And Friday is where Craig will show you his, his best ads over for top agents right now. Oh, nice. And that's where you can also bring up. Nice. I didn't know you were with Craig. As well. Like, I just want to have to do a better or speak. You can also take them as well. Like, that's acting on Fridays. Okay. Yeah, and every other week you're meeting with your coach, who is on you know, phone, Zoom, whatever you need, right? To apply the necessary steps in your business. They have all on the portal here, and they're gonna basically show you like what to use, when to use it, how to apply it, like a return bag, like what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and they're gonna have all that already figured out for you. Just have to follow the direction. And that the trainer is showing you how to do it, not on your own. Okay. Right? If there's no time limit, I guess there's a course that has to be done in three months or it has to be done six months or a year. No. And there's no minimum time limit, anything like that. No. no, I mean I think that if you were talking about minimum time limit, like for you, or so apply the system anywhere, we're gonna about five hours a week. So I mean five hours between your coach, Craig, your coach, your coach. Is that something that you're going to have a It's a lot of time, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if there's that much even material. Yeah, and it means five hours, it means five hours. So you can yeah. Well, I think about it this way, dude. I mean, you've been telling me your biggest thing is lead generation and actually attract, actually generating the leads opposed to just relying on attracting them. You know, this five hours a week you're spending is five hours a week dedicated to that very thing that's the biggest constraint in your business right now so that you can get to the point where your business is freaking running on autopilot, you have a ton of leads and eventually you have enough leads to do the agents and you can even step out. So I wouldn't think about it as more time. I think about it as recalibrating your time so you can put time towards the most important thing in your business right now. It's priorities, 100%. Does it make sense? And that's exactly what Craig will teach you how to do. 
Yeah. And in terms of uh, when he says what is being taught, you answered it with like how the support is structured. And who knows, dude, I just jumped in here. Maybe that was the right answer. I, I, don't, I don't know. No, I could have got deeper into the weeds. I know what you mean. Like how, yeah, how, yeah, yeah. how they need to do it. I understand what you mean by that. I can definitely go there. Yeah. So like, and, and, you know, you don't want to create an objection though. That's the key. Like you don't want to be like, oh, Facebook guys didn't work. So that's, you know, and what, what you could do too is like with a guy like this, he probably needs to know, oh, it's going to look more like this. Yeah. We're, we're essentially going to have you show you how to spin up a specific campaign, likely on social, but using messaging that actually works. You know, Craig's worked with blank. He's worked with blank. He's worked with blank. I mean, Craig's business when he did it, or, you know, Craig's current business is doing X, Y, and Z numbers. We're going to take the same messaging framework and really just apply that to your area. And that's the reason this is actually going to work this time, opposed to how you did it before with, you know, your other Facebook ad agency that just was like, oh yeah, you know, take, you know, whatever, right? Like it's basically throwing money into the trash can. You know, so you might want to throw in, but then like when you, if you have the beginner real estate agent, Dude, they don't need to know Facebook. Like, I would, I, I think, I think you need to use that only for like high D, lot, you know, that type of buyer, right? Yeah. If it's like the sweet little, you know, forty year old lady who's did two transactions last year, it's like, look, we're just going to show you a lot. You know, she's not going to need to know what's different. It's new. She's she beginner. See what I mean? So just use your discretion with that, because I don't want you like. Getting in, you know, talking about the Facebook pixel and this and that, and the next thing that other, you know, like. No, you're right. This is why I brought this call specifically to you because he's like a person I know is closable and he's a tough cookie that I got to get over how to get these people in, basically. For sure. Like how to do it differently. Yep. So is that something you can do or not? Yes, it is. They're one inside, obviously. We can make it work. Oh, yes. And you say that these are important too, because it's not like you have to, you know, you're not point because you have to make a call here. They were like, we understand and I think that's what you know what? Yeah. But essentially, that's where we're five hours a week. And but how, how long would people go through the material? Is what I'm saying. It's like, you know, they're talking like three months for five hours a week, and then I can talk all the material for a week. So, let me look at that thing. Yeah, that's not how it works. Like, you're not here to. Uh, no, of course, not of course. Yeah, it's not of course. No. Yeah. Okay. 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 Do you feel better? I mean, do you feel like you're a nine or a 10? Are you still kind of like not seeing what's being taught? And I'm, I'm good with anything. Just be honest. You know, I just want to pull one of those things, but you do need to, so you did the direct, my, my guys do this all the time. Directionally, you did the right thing. There just needs to be a, like, you need to acknowledge what he said first. Just a little, cause he's like, ah, oh, this guy's like, not him, not just getting the price, you know? So just a little acknowledgement and then, you know, go back to what, how you did it. Because I need to understand the investment of $20,000 a month. There's what lay on me. Okay, you give me value, I see the value. I just need to understand the yeah, see, see, that's why he's responding that way. Oh my God, dollars. Every hundred thousand dollars. No, I'm sorry, yeah. definitely not going to not tell you how much it is. Or that's, I just want to know specifically like, how you go about the process alone. Like, and that's not going to leave it aside. Because a big thing is the alignment. Like, we're not just going to perfect like, let anyone in here just because we can. Or we're also just going to make sure that you understand how we're going to make it work. Because once you said before, it's, it's true, right? It's what you do. So if you're not 100% like, aligned with what needs to be done, then it's not going to work, right? So really just want to know how you feel about the process alone specifically, like outside the investment. How do you feel about this working for you? Is this it something works great? Like, without me actually trying it, uh, if it works great, I can't give you any more input other than if you let me try it. And then I can be like, yeah, you know what? After I try it for a week, yeah, so he's a little frustrated. Yeah, he's, he's giving me everything. Now he's, now he's telling you the answer that you want to hear okay. so he can fucking hear the price. See, yeah. see, how, see how that is? It's like, oh, yeah. And you're kind of in a bad spot because at this point, you, you know, what are you going to do? Like mm -hmm. call them out. I mean, cause like, you know, part of me wants to call them out and be like, all right, dude, like, can I tell you what's coming up for me? It just doesn't feel like you totally get, like you totally think this is what you need to get your real estate business at $50,000 a month, you know? But then if I say that, I'm also, not, I'm also a dick for not giving them the price. So I just got to give them the price at this point. You know what I mean? So it is one of those things. Now, now keep in mind, this is also a symptom of like, you guys kind of got off to the wrong footing in the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. So keep that in mind. Another thing, dude, I actually mentioned this before you were on the call. Uh, dude, I, I see this a lot with guys in, in, in your level, like you're good. Um, and it's, it's interesting. Like, you know, dude, you, I, I totally can empathize with it because you're dealing with these agents, they're tough. They kind of beat you up a little bit. So you've like, I can tell, like you've toughened them, right? And you're like, you got a, you, you got a big backbone, a big spine now. The next level is like, 
having this balance and you can tell even when I'm talking to you, I kind of have it. And when I do these like little role play segments with you, I have it is like a little bit more like fun and enjoyable to, sp- to speak with. And just a, a, like a little bit more personal, like you're very direct, very stoic and like tough, you know, and like you're leading the call and you can close a lot of people that way that works. The next level is like, it's, it's not like you're bending over and being unconfident, right. Or being passive. It's not that at all. It's like, uh, it's just like you're, 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 you're getting to this next level of like, just really being you and being confident. You're the fucking leader, but you're not the leader because you're commanding it with force. You're the leader because of like who you are and how you're showing up and like, you're being authentic. I know that's a little bit woo woo. It's hard for me to explain it. An analogy that might help is like in, in dating, they teach guys, like there's a nice guy who's like a passive rollover. And then usually what happens with the nice guy is he wakes up and then he becomes the jerk, you know? But then like a, a true confident man isn't a jerk because a jerk is like an overcompensation of insecurity. The true confident man is like a man who, who's totally comfortable and he's totally real and he's totally himself at all times. He, he can communicate his intentions very clearly. He has no shame about what he wants. Uh, he's very direct, but he also can empathize. He also can, you know, connect emotion. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've been that person before, just not on this call. So I know what yeah. you mean. Well, well, granted, like, you know, this leadership this guy's, people, he's this different. Fucking challenging me, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really and I haven't had one like a <laughs> on this call, right? Does that make sense? So yeah. I just think that, like, you know, you could see how I almost I communicate. Like, I'm kind of just having a, I'm a little bit looser than you, you know? And you can even tell by your posture, like, you're like a bit like stiff, you know? And so, I know that's a little bit of a Google advice, but it's just something I noticed a couple of times. So hopefully that helps for you. No, I get it. Thank you. Oh, no, it's not going to work, right? So really just want to know how you feel about the process. I want to specifically see how my business helped me get to my goals. How? <laughs> okay. Uh, you, yeah, you got to tell them at this point. No, I was in minutes. I apologize. I just want to okay, see. So you, you, it, it's, it's, you lost at this point because he's like, this guy's annoying. Uh, it's, a, it's a given case. I don't have to be rigid. I see the value. I'm in sales. I understand where you're coming from. I also see the value. And I'm just trying to understand the full picture, right? It's been an hour on the call. I really have, I'm, I really love Jordan. Perfectly honest. Well, if you were to come down, this is an investment of $20,000. I'm going to say, even if I'm a 10, I'm not investing $20,000. I'm not in a position to do that. Um, but if it makes sense from a market point of view, then absolutely. You don't have to say another word, and I'm going to join them. I need to understand that. So I'd like my questions answered as well. This is a um, respectfully answer your question. Yeah, I totally understand what you mean. So once again, I'm really trying to make sure you understand like how we can help you. And I just got to tell them for us. Saying that we can help you by telling you like how we're specifically going to help you. Like basically what I said, right? I'm going to the whole entire system here. Like what about it makes it feel like it's worth it? That's all I'm asking. You're giving me exactly the colors. I am looking for the system. Um, I have no idea what the ARP has to be like, obviously, because I've never used it. Um, in terms of delivery, every single, I mean, I've been in the health area kind of world as well. They, they all have, here's, I can go on the line right now and probably think about 100 listening presentations, right? Uh, it's important. But I think it's the entire system put together that ties in, right? And you're not just mosaically putting puzzle pieces together, right? Yeah. So I get it. And, and I, I see how, if I was to commit to one system, to be honest with you, whether it's Craig or anybody else, to be perfectly honest with you, I will see that. Now, will Craig be the guy that is going to get me to pop pop status without me actually doing the work and seeing the material? I can't answer that for you. I'm trying to be perfectly honest, right? Yeah, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we can help you get from where you are now to where you want to be? We're working for an entire year, the best is twelve thousand per year. Okay. It's about a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, we don't bring it down to a thousand dollars a month. Sorry? We don't bring it down to a thousand dollars a month. Okay. It's gonna well, pay up front. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's US dollars. It's US dollars. Canadian. It is Canadian. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um but the investment. So just just make sure, dude, like I think you're a little bit frustrated with this guy. You're like, you you kind of have like this, I think like a in your in your mind, like F F U is like you're like, oh, fuck you, man. So you just got to make sure, like, it's not a fucking arm wrestling match, dude. Like, it's not I win or you win. So, again, it's like in that three levels. In that middle level, when you're, you're kind of in the jerk energy, right? It's, it's like you have to win or he has to win. And there's no flexibility. When you get really good, you can go between masculine and feminine energy. You can go between, like, letting him kind of feel like he's leading a little bit, but really you're still in control. You know, and so you have this better flexibility, this more looseness, and it will, it will, it'll help this guy not be because, like, you know, you're alpha, he's alpha, he wants the information, you want the fucking answers the right way, and it's just like, <laughs> right? Yeah. And even if he really needs this, uh, you know, it's it's kind of tough. So let, let's finish it, and I have a good next step. You might be able to close this guy, but I'm gonna give you a little creative option you can use. Entire ball, all of them for the beginning. Yeah, we'll say this with all at once. I mean, or sorry, I don't feel like that's the best thing for them. You know, like financially, based on where they're at. So you talk about breaking it up. But I mean, honestly, the most important thing, like I was saying, you really have to think about the process. I mean, investment aside, it is something like you heard someone do. Yeah, so, so what I would have said here is, again, like, just because at this point, 
you guys have gone through this thing so many times. What I would have said here is, dude, we can break it up. But like, what I need to know is, are you saying you 100% want to do this? You just need a, like a way to make it work financially. Just direct, right? So, okay, cool. Um, and then honestly, man, I would say, like, I normally you go through the whole financial thing with the cash on hand. 99% of the time, do it. In this, if you dropped me in this situation right now with this guy as frustrated as he is, I'm just going to give him up. What if we did a six bet? If I was willing to do that for you, which I normally don't do, majority of the clients just do it up front. But if we did that, would you come in? No. See what he says. You know? And I would say, okay, gotcha. Do you feel like it's like you don't know if this is what you want to do? You don't know if this is going to work for you? Or is it just like finances are really tight? And I don't know how, you know, I just threw out six pay randomly. I don't know what the typical shit is with you guys. Maybe, maybe you start with two. Maybe you start with two. I don't know. But like in this case, you just got to anchor one high and plan to maybe downsell a, a lower one. Normally you do the whole finance. 99% of the time you're going to do the whole gotcha. Okay. You're hundred percent in double tie down. You go fresh in, you get cash on hand credit. You probably know what it is. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely eye opener uh, in terms of what is the, the process you guys have going on here. Um, without actually getting into a little more detail, a little more research about what you do, I don't see the value of Rothman's lawsuit, honest with you. Um, but again, I, I see how he's done very, very well for himself. But that, that's not the same thing. I mean, just because Craig has done very, very well for himself doesn't mean that that's going to work for me, right? Because, you know what I'm saying? And you could have helped 100 other guys, maybe work for them, work the personality. So what I'll do is I'll do a little more research for Craig, and maybe uh, I can kind of string forward or something where I can understand how this is going to help me. You yeah. answer my questions, that's for sure. Um, but I'm still also trying to understand the philosophy of Craig. Okay. Yeah, so you might say the philosophy of Craig. Do you want to use a black I think so, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so I think that's probably the best thing to do. Like I said, we're not looking to bring money because we want to join. Yeah, we're looking to have a business for you. So, how the person who starts here, right? You can process it here, you can onboard, send your questionnaire, and then everyone is actually getting based on what you want to do. All right, I just feel like, dude, can I be honest with you for a second? Absolutely, yeah. No, I'm, I'm talking, I'm, I'm role playing, right? Oh. Can I be honest with you for a second? Look, dude, I, I totally get it. This, you know, like this call probably didn't, know, didn't go how you wanted it to go. Okay. And I, and I get that you're frustrated. And I get you got to go on a couple of minutes too. Right. I also understand that like right now, part of this frustration is coming from the fact that you're freaking, we're making it rain. And the past couple of months has been really frustrating and you don't know the best way to generate these. But let me say this. You just said that like, look, Craig's done really well for himself. That doesn't mean it's going to work for you. I get it. Dude, sometimes the best, the best basketball player isn't always the best coach. But dude, I could show you a page with thousands of people the same stuff is worked for and worked for tremendously at a level that is truly beyond where you're at in business, period. So look, I get you're frustrated. You don't have to like me, but don't let a bad conversation with me get in the way of doing what's right. So look, just because I probably fucked up this conversation, what I'm willing to do is look, you said like nine times, you got to see it. You got to try it before you believe it. Now you can't come into the program and take advantage of our resources for three months and then refund all the way and like say sign up. But what I'd be willing to do is let you in and you come in, attend some of the calls, get kind of the process rolling. And dude, in the bottom of your bones, if you wake up seven days later and you're like, like, this is the worst decision I've ever made. Wow, I just threw 10, 12K in the trash can, which won't happen. But just in case it does, we'll just give you a refund. And normally we never do that. But like, I feel like I freaking butchered this conversation. And I don't want that to keep in the way of you doing what's right. Because even though I know this conversation kind of went off the rails at the same time, I know this is what you fucking do. So that, that's what I would have done. That's like my last like ditch effort there. That sounds incredible. <laughs> Honestly. All right. So uh, yeah, hopefully that helped. I had something else I was going to mention. Um, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So here's how you can save this sale. Do you have a female closer on your team? Yeah. Okay. Hit her up and be like, yo, I can send you the recording of this call, but like, I, I kind of got a real alpha guy and we sort of bucked heads. He wants to do it, but he don't like. It. So look, I'll give you the guy's number. I'll give you 60% commission. 
we'll, we'll split it, but I'll give you 60%. You call them and just say, Hey, you know, just wanted to check in. How was your, uh, how was your caller, Javon? Did you have any, did you have any feedback? He's going to, uh, oh, dude, I'm, I'm super sorry. Honestly, I'll relay this up to Bob or uh, up to Craig. Um, look like aside from, you know, Javon being like the worst guy ever. Did you like the idea? Like, did you, do you like the idea of, you know, potentially maybe working with Craig? I'm not saying you got to decide right now, but like, would you at least be open to reconsidering? Okay, great. And then she can book him and go. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth a try. Yeah. We used to do that stuff all the time. All right, guys. Hopefully this was, was this helpful for you guys. Give me like a thumbs up. If y'all you, were like, okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Dude, you're good, man. You got a lot, you got a tremendous amount of potential, dude. So like, yeah, it's just a little nuanced stuff. And you know, again, like watching that call, I'm like, I see so much of myself in that call. Like I did the same shit, like all, like all those mistakes I made, you know? And also pretty hard. Like, dude, wouldn't you get to be able to close people like that? Cause like, he's not even a, he's like, dude, even like, okay. So like, for instance, I'm also very high D, but if I got on a call, I'm not going to be as much of a dick as that guy, you know? So he's kind of in this phase where like, I think it's typically people who make like two, $300,000 a year. A lot of times, maybe, maybe like upwards of like 500 grand a year. They think they're real hot shit. You know, they make this money. They think it's going to earn them all this respect. <laughs> Nobody respects them. That's why he was at. He was two fifty. Nothing, nothing, nothing changes, and so they need to like, like force you to to like respect. Like, yeah, like oh, you, you're a salesperson. I'm making quarter million bucks a year. Like, like you should do bend to, bend to my freaking will. Like he's kind of one of those guys at this point, right? So okay, great, awesome. And I'm not saying that's who who he is. Like I don't know the guy. I'm more characterizing the uh, the archetype, right? You know, you just got to be able to to maneuver those guys, and it just it, it, you know it, it it takes a while because also they tend to piss you off, and like when you get emotional, it's really like you might know the right tactics, but when you're when you're flaring up, it's like hard to do it, you know. And you you didn't look like you were flaring up, but like you probably inside were a little bit pissed off. Oh hell yeah! What do you mean? Kidding me? Yeah, yeah. you're probably like, a little bit, a little bit mad. <laughs> right? So as you as you get more reps in, what you want to do, and, and here's the biggest frame I'll leave you with, is like you want to get in this mindset of when that happens, you're like, wow, that's interesting. I'm just gonna play with the situation. Yeah. Keyword play, right? And you see how I was saying be looser, play. I'm gonna play with the situation, and you need to make it so it's like your like net worth or net worth self-worth is not on the line on this call. Like it's, it, you're not really afraid of it. You know, the outcome of this call has nothing to do with your own self-worth or, uh, you know, feeling rejected or any of that stuff. Right. Like you just need to game a phone. It's like, wow, this is an interesting situation. Let me see if I can use my persuasion abilities to open this guy up the right way. We'll see what happens. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I just would gamify a little bit more. That'll help. That'll help you get through these things. Cause I think knowing what to do is pretty simple, but it's like keeping your emotions in check. So you don't like, you know, cause he comes on all, and, and it's just right from the beginning, like right from the beginning, he's kind of like, really like, Oh, it's one of these guys. And you kind of get frustrated right from the beginning. And then you guys don't get on the same foot, you know, and it's kind of out of control. So anyways, man, hopefully that helps. And uh, hopefully the rest of you guys enjoyed it as well. Thanks for watching this video, guys. For more content, you can check out one of these videos on the screen to continue leveling up your skill set in sales, business, life, and everything. See ya.